Good morning. morning. Welcome to St. Catherine's, uh, whether you're here in person or whether you're catching up later on the live stream. Uh, My name is Tim Carter. I'm the vicar here at St. Catherine's and at All St. Wellington. And it's really good to welcome you to our service of communion this morning. Um, Just as we start, a few notices. You'll see that we have started producing paper notices for those who find it easier to read paper than look on uh, email. We do have large print and smaller print copies available. You can, you can read, so you can read them yourselves. But just to notice on the back page, we noticed that um, we're doing a cap hamper again for Christians Against Poverty clients. Um, and Kim will have a list next week. Is that right? Excellent, good. So there will be a list. If you can buy things that are on the list and not bring things that aren't on the list, that will really help. Um, they're quite, quite strict about that. So anyway, that will be coming. And uh, just as an awareness for next week, there will be a service here. And we've got the Reverend Matt Beer from Telford Minster who's going to be coming and leading that service. And I'm sure you will make him very welcome. Um, I'm not quite sure why on the notice he says he's the Reverend Reverend Matt Beer, whether he's more reverend than the rest of us. But there you go. Um, he's going to be here uh, with his curate and then the curate's going to be coming uh, a little bit, uh, a couple of weeks later, to lead. So that's really great. I'm sure you'll be able to welcome them. So, if it's comfortable for you to do so, would you stand with me as we sing our opening hymn, number 129, Hail to the Lord's Anointed, number 129. Oh, 
Please do be seated. And our service continues on page 237 in the prayer book, page 237. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. God spake these words and said, I am the Lord thy God, thou shalt have none other gods but me. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not make to thyself any graven image, nor the likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or in the earth beneath, or in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down to them, nor worship them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, and visit the sins of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and show mercy unto thousands in them that love me and keep my commandments. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Remember that thou keep holy the Sabbath day. Six days shalt thou labour and do all that thou hast to do. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt do no manner of work, thou and thy son and thy daughter, thy manservant and thy maidservant, thy cattle and the stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the seventh day and hallowed it. Lord, Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Honour thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt do no murder. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not steal. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbour. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbour's house, thou shalt not covet thy neighbour's wife, nor his servant, nor his maid, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is his. Lord, have mercy upon us, and write all these thy laws in our hearts, we beseech thee. Almighty and everlasting God, we are taught by thy holy word, that the hearts of kings are in thy rule and governance, and that thou dost dispose and turn them as it seemeth best to thy godly wisdom. We humbly beseech thee so to dispose and govern the heart of Elizabeth thy servant, our queen and governor, that in all her thoughts, words and works, she may ever seek thy honour and glory, and study to preserve thy people committed to her charge in wealth, peace and godliness. Grant this, O merciful Father, for thy dear Son's sake, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Grant, we beseech thee, merciful Lord, to thy faithful people pardon and peace, that they may be cleansed from all their sins and serve thee with a quiet mind, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We now hear our first reading. The first reading is taken from Job 42. You can find this on page 472 of the Pew Bible. Job 42, verses 1 to 6, following 10 to end. Page 472 in the Pew Bible. <coughs> Then Job answered the Lord, 
I know that thou canst do all things, and that no purpose of thine can be thwarted. Who is this that hides counsel without knowledge? Therefore I have uttered what I did not understand, things too wonderful for me which I did not know. Hear, and I will speak. I will question you, you, and you declare to me. I had heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, but now my eye sees thee. Therefore, I despise myself and repent in dust and ashes. Verse 10. And the Lord restored the fortunes of Job when he had prayed for his friends, and the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Then came to him all his brothers and sisters, and all who had known him before, and ate bread with him in his house. And they showed him sympathy and comforted him for the evil the Lord had brought upon him. And each of them gave him a piece of money and a ring of gold. And the Lord blessed the latter days of Job more than his beginning. And he had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, a thousand yoke of oxen, and a thousand sheep asses. He had also seven sons and three daughters. And he called the names of the first Jemima, and the name of the second Kezia, the name of the third Kerenhapul. And in all the land there were no women so fair as Job's daughters, and their father gave them inheritance among their brothers. And after this Job lived a hundred and forty years, and saw his sons and his sons' sons four generations. And Job died in an old, an old man and full of days. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks. 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 Our second hymn is number 303, Break Thou the Bread of Life. If it's comfortable for you to do so, would you stand as we sing together, number 303. True. 
please remain standing as we hear our gospel reading. Jericho with his disciples and a great number of people, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway side begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And many charged him that he should hold his peace, but he cried the more a great deal. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And they called the blind man, saying unto him, Be of good comfort, rise, he calleth thee. And he casting away his garment, rose, and came to Jesus. And Jesus answered and said unto him, What wilt thou that I should do unto thee? The blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. And immediately he received his sight, and followed Jesus in the way. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We pay, turn to page 240 as we say the creed together on page 240. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, Light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father, and he shall come again with glory, to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, spake by the prophets, and I believe one Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please do be seated. As we gather round the written word and listen to the spoken word, may we meet with the living word, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. There are none so blind as those who will not see. I wonder if you've heard that proverb. I don't hear it so much nowadays. Um, it seems to me it does say something about the times in our lives when the evidence is there. Um, but we don't like the conclusions it points to, so we choose not to see. Um, sometimes in parenting, I think that uh, selective deafness and selective blindness is uh, not a bad strategy, 
choosing not to see. Um, the run-up to the episode that we've read this morning in Mark's eyewitness account of the good news of Jesus' life is full of people who can't see what's really going on. Um, to an extent, it almost seems willful. So let's go back a couple of chapters, and I'll just take you through a brief summary. If you want to read this through at home later, do. But um, let's go back to the beginning of chapter 9. Beginning of chapter 9, uh, Jesus takes three of his closest friends for a, a day trip, a hike, up a mountain. Um, and at the top of the mountain, Jesus is transfigured. He starts to shine. And he's joined by Moses and Elijah, and there's a cloud, and the cloud has a voice from heaven, and it says, This is my son whom I love. Listen to him. And um, then they try and say, Oh, should we make your tent then? Oh, nobody asked for a tent. Um, and on the way down, Jesus is talking about what will happen after he's raised from the dead. And having just been told from heaven to listen to Jesus, the, um, his friends were just, it says they were discussing what, it, what rising from the dead meant. And a little while later, again, Jesus is talking about his death and resurrection that's coming up. And his disciples, it says, did not understand what he meant and were afraid to ask him about it. And through the rest of chapters 9 and 10, we hear about the disciples arguing about who's the greatest stopping parents bringing their children to Jesus to be blessed, getting confused when Jesus taught that it was difficult for rich people to get into the kingdom of heaven and being afraid because Jesus was leading them towards Jerusalem. So for these two chapters, we've had Jesus' closest friends who have been with him for nearly three years, listened to all his teaching, seen all the works and the signs and the miracles he's done, spending time with Jesus, they cannot see who he really is still. And they can't see what it means. But there is a man who knows who Jesus is and what it means. A man who is physically unable to see, physically blind, but has understood that Jesus is the son of David, God's chosen and anointed one, come to bring healing and wholeness to the world. That's what he calls out, Jesus, son of David. Why don't we join him, sitting on the side of the road? Let's sit next to Bartimaeus. As I'm sitting here in the dust, I realise that I'm blind, and my physical eyes work okay, but I don't see everything. I don't know everything. So I come and sit with Bartimaeus in humility. Now, this guy I'm sat next to, he, he probably wasn't born blind. Something had happened to him. He used to be able to see perfectly, but now he can't. That's not fair. That's why he could have been shouting at God. That's not fair. But he didn't. He'd heard that Jesus was coming. And he'd obviously heard something about Jesus already. He was some kind of good guy who said good stuff and did good things. But he'd never had the opportunity to meet him. And now he sat next to me. He has his chance. So he does start shouting. But he's not shouting, that's not fair. He's shouting, Jesus, son of David. Have pity on me. But people are people. And they start shushing him. I'm shouting in church? Shh. But he won't have it. Bartimaeus, I'm sat next to. He could have complained at God. Could have asked God why there are so many people, horrible people around trying to shut him up. But he doesn't. He shouts again. Even louder this time. Jesus, son of David, have pity on me. And now what's happening? Jesus has stopped. He stands still. He's calling Bartimaeus over. And then as I'm listening, as I'm still sat on the side of the road, Jesus says something that seems a little bit strange to me. He asks this man, 
What do you want? What do you want me to do for you? And that strike you as a bit odd? And you think it was obvious what Bartimaeus would want? Surely he'd want to see. Well, maybe, but Jesus doesn't often go for the obvious. You see, Bartimaeus is a beggar. He might just have been after money. He might have been, it might have been part of his normal patter to get the price of a loaf of bread. It might have been a bit bigger than that. Maybe he'd wanted to hear Jesus teaching, to sit closer so that he could get some wisdom. But no. As I watch, Bartimaeus has a big ask for Jesus. He wanted to see and he believed that Jesus could do it. So he puts it all on the line. And he says to Jesus, Lord, that I may see. That's some big ask. But it came off. His belief was justified. His trust, his faith was justified. He asked a big ask and he got a big answer. Not only was it a big ask, it was a simple ask. Bartimaeus doesn't use lots of complicated words. He uses a very few simple words. Only five words. Five words that express everything he needs to say. Now we heard that he called Jesus Master or Lord. But there's a little bit more going on here. The word he uses in Aramaic is Rabboni. Um, and that's a bit like you might have heard the word rabbi for a Jewish teacher. Well, rabboni is a little bit like rabbi, but um, well, it's a lot like it, but it communicates a deeper respect, a deeper obedience, a deeper honour. And it only appears twice in the Bible. Twice. Once here, and the other time, when Mary Magdalene meets Jesus in the garden following his resurrection. At first, she doesn't recognize him. He, she thinks he's the gardener. And he says, oh, where have you taken my Lord's body? What, what, what have you done with it? Until he says her name, Mary. And she responds, Rabboni, my Lord, my master, my teacher. Now, I don't want to put too much weight on this, but it does seem interesting to me that the two times we hear this word, from the lips of people who are being helped to see Jesus. Having said and acknowledged Jesus as his master, his Lord, his teacher, Bartimaeus asks for what he needs, that I may see. And his big, simple ask is met. Jesus heals his physical sight so that he can see, physically as well as spiritually. But the story doesn't end there. It never does with Jesus. There's always the next step. Whenever we've discovered something new about Jesus, whenever we've experienced a new thing, there is always the next step. And the next step is continue down the road with Jesus. That's what Bartimaeus did. He let go of his old life. He took off his mantle, his cloak, and left it there, his only shelter. He went to Jesus. He didn't let the... The horrible people stand in the way. He got up, spoke up, went with Jesus and followed him. You see, as I'm sat here beside the road and I'm watching Jesus going off and the disciples and Bartimaeus following, Bartimaeus started this story, sat by the way, and ends it walking alongside him, following Jesus in the way. So what? This is an old story about a man who lived a long time ago and a long way away. What does it mean for us today? Well, it seems to me that as we hear this story, it asks some pretty good questions about our own stories. What is it that we have difficulty seeing or understanding? Are we going to cry out to Jesus to come and help us or are we going to let him walk by? And I do mean cry out. Sometimes nothing else will do. I know that in very, church, very often in church we can be all quiet and subdued. And that's important. Reverence is important. But some, sometimes something else is more important. 
being honest with God and telling God how we feel. Um, I wonder if some, sometimes we miss out on something by being a bit scared of shouting in church. I know from personal experience how freeing it can be. Shouts of joy and of anger. Shouts of praise and of disappointment. They're all part of our lives. Why do we feel we have to leave them at the church door? And when we want to call out to Jesus, are we going to let the horrible people get in the way? Or are we going to leave them to God and get on with our own lives? Have we got the courage for the really big ask? Those things we really want to get rid of that are holding us down. We're not even sure that God can deal with them. Do we sometimes feel like we don't know the right words? We can't come up with clever prayers and long, kind of complicated liturgy. I wonder what we could learn about the Bartimaeus examples, about using few words to share with God simply what's on our hearts. I think we also have to know what we do know. And sometimes we do cry out to God. Sometimes we ask simply. Sometimes we have faith and we're not healed. And sometimes perhaps that even takes even greater courage to choose to continue to follow. The reality is Bartimaeus saw who Jesus really was and had faith in who Jesus really was before he was healed. He'd already given his life to Jesus. And I wonder, even if he hadn't been healed, I wonder if he wouldn't have walked on with Jesus anyway. I don't know. We'll never know. But Bartimaeus, he had been healed, so it was easy for him to seek to walk on. Many of us have been praying for many people to be healed over the years, and they've not been. Well, we continue to have the courage and the faith to walk with Jesus, even through the difficult times, as Job did trusting in the end that we will come to the place of wholeness and healing in heaven and most importantly are we going to allow Jesus to show us the light to help us to see him our risen Lord and Master more clearly than we ever have and to follow him every step of the way Amen Before we sing our next hymn, we, just, we are just going to take a moment just to have a little bit of space. I just invite you to close your eyes. And be aware of God's presence. And perhaps imagine Jesus sat with you. Saying to you. What would you have me do for you? Not for the person sitting next to me, you. Or a family member or a friend you're concerned about. But Jesus loves you. I'm speaking to you as an individual. What's your heart? Jesus says, What would you have me do for you? invite you in the silence of your heart to respond in a few simple words tell Jesus simply as Bartimaeus did
Gracious God, we offer you our prayers this morning. And we commit to following you in the way. With faith and hope. Amen. As we continue to respond to that and come towards communion, we're going to sing number 270. If it's comfortable for you to do so, would you please stand as we sing 270, Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing.
Please do be seated. Our service continues on page 244. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church militant here in earth. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our alms and oblations and to receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity and concord, and grant that all they that do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also to save and defend all Christian kings, princes and governors, and especially thy servant Elizabeth our Queen, that under her we may be godly and quietly governed, and grant unto her whole counsel and to all that are put in authority under her that they may truly and indifferently minister justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and curates, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succour all them who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. We also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to give us grace to follow their good examples, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Amen. We turn on to page 251. You that do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins, and are in love and charity with your neighbours, and intend to lead a new life, following the commandments of God, and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith, and take this holy sacrament to your comfort, and make your humble confession to Almighty God. And we say together, Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed, by thought, word and deed, against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent, now heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us, the burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honour and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Saviour Christ saith unto all that truly turn to him. Come unto me, all that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Hear also what St Paul saith. This is a true saying, and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, 
Hear also what St. John said. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right and our bounden duty, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord most high. Amen. On page 255, we pray together. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there, by his one oblation of himself once offered, a full, perfect and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue, a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we, receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Amen. We are continuing to distribute communion in one kind only. If you would like to receive the bread, please do stand where you are or indicate to me otherwise as I come round. It's absolutely fine if you don't want to receive. I understand completely.
continue on page 257 as we pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee, for that thou dost vouchsafe to feed us, who have duly received these holy mysteries, with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of thy favour and goodness towards us, that we are very members incorporate in the mystical body of thy Son, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom, by the merits of the most precious death and passion of thy dear Son. And we most humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honour and glory, world without end. Amen. Amen. If it's comfortable for you to do so, would you stand as we say the Gloria together. Glory be to God on high, and in earth peace, goodwill towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee. We give thanks to thee for thy great glory, O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty. O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sitteth at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Our final hymn is number 333, Thou Whose Almighty Word, number 333. Love, my boundless 
The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.